Hello and welcome to my Civilization 3 World War 2 scenario with me playing as the Soviet Union. Uh, I've already made an overview video for this. I'll put an annotation for it. It kind of explains the scenario in general and doesn't go into gameplay. But for this video I'll go into the first turn as the Soviet Union, which is actually a pretty big turn in itself. Uh, I'll get over a few details first. As you see down by the uh, technology, I'm researching the Barbarossa campaign at three turns. So I set the minimum num or the uh, minimum number of turns to research a technology at three, and there is no technology tra trading between civilizations. It's my way of pacing the game, so you know I can make it go slower with a higher amount of turns or faster with a lower amount of turns. And I think this is a good balance. I'll just show you the check tree again real quick. It's right here. And I go more into it in the overview video. The next thing I'll show you is military advisor. So right now I have 1,130 units and I'm allowed 1,482. But what I'm allowed is about to shrink once the uh, Germans start their assault. So the Eastern Front is massive. I'll start at the very north, all the way up at Murmansk, and then work my way down, briefly explaining some things. So Murmansk here is surrounded by German units, pretty powerful units, and um, historically, I know Murmansk wasn't taken by the Axis forces, but I actually deleted the big fortress here, and I'm pretty much letting them take over Murmansk and these other northern cities. I do that because I want mo just more of a challenge. Just want less cities and see what I can do with them. And then along here it's a combination of German units and then my weak defensive units and then more uh, Finnish units which are blue. And down here by... here's Leningrad right here with uh, lots of defensive forces and a lot of ships. You can see destroyers, subs, and infantry. Here are the uh, Finnish forces. They're, it's mostly infantry, actually pretty strong infantry. And then down here, where the Germans are, so this is their half of Poland, and then all their forces are already lined up, ready to go. And my forces, uh, they can't move the first turn, so the Axis forces get their uh, turn of attack or surprise attack. As you can see, my infantry units are four attack and four defense with uh, low health. Uh, Conscript only has three hit points. A infantry division for the Germans is six attack, six defense, and as veterans, they have 8 health. And their forces are spread out. Some of these stacks are very big. Some of them are small. They, there's a wide variety of units. Uh, all these divisions were there when I downloaded the map. And then I added some more units to increase Germany's strength and increase the difficulty for me. And this is where they'll pour their, um, their strongest attack. is actually through the northern part here up toward Nor Leningrad. And then further down, I guess in the middle, the central part, the uh, German forces are still there, but uh, there's also Eastern European forces like Hungary. Uh, here's Hungary there, and I think this is Croatia. They'll send units, and then they'll take these cities. And then the south, there's Romania. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, Romania. And their Eastern European uh, countries' units aren't as strong as the Germans. You don't have to worry about them as much. And then here's Romania in the blue right here. But the Germans also have a southern army, I guess you can call it, with uh, lots and lots of units. You see, that these are all German units. Uh, tank battalions, infantry battalions, a little bit of artillery. There's another really big stack here. And the... Um, the reason I put actually add a lot of these units in was uh, because the German AI will not send a lot of reinforcements to the southern section here. So 
they won't get as far in the south. I just put a lot of units so that they at least have a chance to push far. Uh, the last time I played, they didn't even get close to Stalingrad, and I'm, I'm hoping they'll at least push for Stalingrad. Uh, another thing with historical accuracy, if you see that unit on the top there, that big tank is a Tiger II, and uh, I know they didn't exist in 41, but uh, it's there because they need all the help they can get in the south. And a really powerful unit will make them, I think, a lot braver to attack some of the cities maybe further on, which might have, I have better defenses set up for them. Okay, just a few more notes to go over before I let the AI take their turn. The, um, the airfields here are full of these early fighters that I have, and most of them are going to be destroyed when the Germans run over them in their first turn. I guess that's what happened in real life when the uh, invasion actually happened. A lot of the planes were just shot down or destroyed because they attacked so quickly. Um, the tanks I have, you see these here, these are T-34-40s. They have 9 attack and 12 defense, which is actually pretty good for an early unit and 3 movement. The, the problem is I don't have that many of them, and they don't have a lot of hit points. At least the early T-34s don't. Most of my army is made out of the basic infantry, uh, the Soviet infantry 1939. Although there I do have other types like armored cars, which have a decent defense value and are very, very mobile. And um, let's see here are these... Uh, Katyushas, which are rocket launchers, but they're not terribly useful. Uh, one last note is that for the tanks, at least they cannot move through forest or hills unless there is a road going through it, which will can become very important later on when Germany is halfway inside of your land and you need something to slow them down. Actually, cutting the roads helps a lot. Also, these things here are defensive fortifications. I put a lot of them in around cities. See, I surrounded Novgorod and Moscow's got a lot of them. Uh, I put them there as a way to hopefully slow down the German army or force them to either go around or go through it. And uh, in the earlier versions of the scenario, there were really powerful fortifications. If you see that one up there in Leningrad, that is 18 defense. There are a lot of those fortifications in all these cities. And I deleted a lot of them except for the key cities because the Germans would just go around the cities that had the fortifications in them and not even try to attack them, which left these big holes in the territory that they had gained. And there's one last thing I forgot, the uh, strategy that I'm going to be doing. As you can see here, I am building mostly workers, and have spent some money to hurry production of workers. So I'm going to focus on uh, transforming the land into mines and forests to maximize shield production, and then build the factories and coal plants to further increase the shield production to just ridiculous levels, and then start producing units that way. So I'm going to have to uh, stick with a small army at first, because it's going to, a lot of it's going to get wiped out in the initial attack, and then uh, slow down the Germans as much as possible before I can start building massive quantities of units. Okay, and now the next part is just to let the AI do their turn, and then I'll comment over sections of it, not the entire thing, because that would be over 40 minutes, and I'll just I'll just cut it down to the important parts and talk about that. So the Finnish go first. Right now I'm showing their planes bombing me, but I have cut most of the bombing out because so little happens, and so I can get to the important battles faster. I'll show every city that is captured this turn, and I'll show some battles without commentary so that you can hear them. I haven't done anything like a Let's Play before, and a big Civ 3 game presents an extra challenge, so bear with me.
All right, so the Finnish just took their first city, sort of Lava, I think it's called, and by taking out the infantry unit station there. The next city they go after is Viborg, which is just north of Leningrad. They took Kalevala without trouble and then continued to clean up my infantry around Leningrad. Battles like these I'm going to skip unless I have something to say over them. If you'd like to comment and just tell me if you'd like me to skip more battles or show more battles, just let me know. Um, I'm going to stick to showing the interesting battles or the important battles for now. The next city they conquer is Kem, which is a port on the ocean which connects to the Atlantic Ocean by going north of Finland. That's all of the cities that Finland uh, conquered in their first turn. And there they, uh, looks like they have a large army made of very strong infantry and uh, they have very fast light tank units. Their power will wane as the scenario continues, they just don't have the production power to keep up their assault. But still they have strong units so if I ever counterattack them it will be difficult to retake their cities that they've taken from me. And uh, even though they are knocking on Leningrad's door they have... Uh, not even close to the kind of power it would require to put a dent in Leningrad. There's Hungary taking one of my cities that is full of fighter planes. They mostly kill infantry in that area and take one more city for this turn. They are in the central part of the Eastern Front and are actually more of an annoyance than a threatening army. There are very few cities that they will capture beyond this point. Next up is Romania in the south. They take three cities this turn and are much stronger than the Hungarians. But still, the Germans are the major threat here even in the south. The German units are just far superior in quality. The Romanians actually still have cavalry units. I'll let these battles play out for a little while. That was a mountain infantry shooting ahead to attack Hirovgrad. They have two movement and ignore terrain movement costs. The AI will use them to race into your territory to capture workers and artillery. They have six attack and seven defense which makes them extremely difficult to get rid of once they get into your territory.
Germany goes next, and the first thing it does is retreat all of its artillery. That's what you're seeing there. I don't know why the AI retreats all of its artillery, but it seems to want to do it for defensive purposes. Uh, hopefully they bring some artillery back up later. I'll show a lot of battles for this turn with the Germans to display the many kinds of panzers and some other types of units. This is a T-34 tank attacking the city of Odessa. Now I know T-34s are Russian tanks, but the Germans actually start with a few T-34s under their control. This is to simulate uh, units that they would have captured in the initial uh, invasion of the Soviet Union. The Germans just took their first city of Bialystok. If you saw the unit that captured the city was a truck that changed to infantry to fight and then turned back into a truck when it moved in, is a motorized infantry unit. They have the same strength and health as their non-motorized counterparts, but have three movement instead of one. The downside is that they are like tanks and need roads to move through hills and roads. The AI will, re will rarely build these uh, units. They come into play early on because they are faster than most panzers, which have two movement. This is a German half-track attacking one of my infantry. Half-tracks have a high mobility of either 3 or 4 movement and a high defense value, but have a low attack value. That was a Panzerfaust unit uh, killing one of my infantry. Panzerfausts have 15 attack power, which is very high. It's about as high as a late Panzer IV unit. And uh, I'll be talking over some more of these battles. I don't know how much I should, I should show, because I don't know if you guys want to show the battles and explain the units, or to just get more on with the strategy and skip over more of the battles. The Germans just took their next city of uh, Brest-Litovsk, or Litovsk, uh, I'm not sure how to say it, and then a an, um, German engineer attacked one of my infantry. All the engineers have flamethrowers and a lot of HP. Uh, this is all normal, all these uh, capturing of my cities. I expect them to take around 15 or so the first turn. The Germans just took the city of Slonim, and they're about to take the city of Odessa. Odessa is an important city because it's deep in the south, 
and uh, the Germans can heal up units there and attack more of my cities from there in the southern section. I'm going to show some more battles now without any commentary. Uh, if you're annoyed by the sound of the Russian infantry, just uh, just wait till you play the game. There are a ton more battles that I have cut out already from this playthrough, and there are a lot more to come. That was a motorcycle attacking uh, Gurdno. Uh, motorcycles actually have seven attack power, which is pretty good. And then the next unit here is a BT tank, which is another Russian tank that the Germans control. It's attacking and taking one of my airfields. The uh, the very fast units really take the stage here because they can shoot out ahead of the slower, more powerful uh, Panzers. Uh, I don't know about you, but I really like the sound of those T thirty fours battling each other. I just really like the sound of that, and I'll play some other battles if uh, both units uh, sound very good. Some of the units actually don't have any sound, or sometimes they don't have animation. I guess just whoever created the mod didn't have time to get around to doing the hundreds and hundreds of tasks required to create all these units and make it seem like a really well-rounded world. Uh, you'll see that in these coming moves, the uh, Germans move up in the central part uh, and the southern part as well. I'm hoping that they'll keep it up. <laughs> 